Well, good morning, family. Hope you guys are having a wonderful, blessed day because Grammy's having a wonderful, blessed day. Today is Sunday at our house and we're having uh, a Sunday afternoon lunch with my daughter and her boyfriend and our two little grandbabies. They're coming over to eat and I'm making cornflake chicken. It's something that we always like to eat here at the house and I haven't made it in forever and it was requested by my husband cornflake chicken and it's really good for a diabetic my grandmother used to make it she was a three shot a day diabetic and uh, she would often cook this because you bake it in the oven and it gives it a nice crispy outside and usually I use uh, the boneless skinless chicken tenders and then I do like a milk and an egg wash then put it in there and then you put your oil, your pan and you put it in the oven and it's baked and not fried and it is absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. So uh, I'm going to gather all my ingredients and uh, then we will get to cooking in the kitchen. I'm so glad to be back in the kitchen with you guys. I really am. I told my little girl this morning, I said, I'm cooking, I'm baking this. I've got some things I've got to clean up out of the view over here because it was a cleaning evening yesterday and I haven't got all my stuff put away from where I did my cleaning. And, uh, but we're going to do some cooking. We're going to do it today. I'll be right back. All right, guys, when you are making cornflake chicken, the first ingredient you have to have is cornflakes. And they don't have to be the name brand. They can be a generic. I got this one, and it's pretty much going to take most of this box for a 40-ounce bag of the boneless, skinless chicken tenders. And you're going to want to have them thawed. I've had mine thawing in a bowl in the refrigerator. And so uh, I kind of let, let them lay out when I went to bed late last night, got up early this morning, and put them in a bowl in the refrigerator. But we're fixing to get this ground. Now, my mother-in-law used to make this, too. and She would roll these out with a Coke bottle, hammer, all the things that she had. But what we're fixing to do is we're going to use my little mini food processor because I don't have a big one. Because I don't want to have to beat these alive this morning. We're going to do them right. I'll be right back. to take this cornflake uh, breading that I made. and See, I, I like some of it little and fine, some of it a little bit thicker. That way you get a nice good crust on there. And I'm probably gonna add maybe about a teaspoon of seasoning salt. And we're gonna add maybe about a teaspoon of garlic powder. I've got this uh, steak seasoning salt, and I just have a little bit left. I'm just going to go ahead and add that. And we're going to add probably about a teaspoon of pepper, because we like ours a little bit peppery. And then my hands are clean, and so I'm just going to go in there and kind of mix that around. Okay. Now, the next thing that we got to do is we've got to make the, the wet batter. So in this one, we're going to take and put four eggs, my farm fresh eggs, look at those pretty blue eggs, and brown eggs. My girls have done a good job laying this winter. The Lord has really blessed us. We haven't, we haven't had a problem. They've, they've, nine little hens have averaged about six to seven eggs a day through the winter. Can't complain about that. So we're going to bust this up. I'm going to put these eggs over here out of the way. And look at what's happened. I always do that. I always lose my fork down in there. Okay, we got that. We are going to season this side too. So what I usually like to do is I like to make a paste. I put a little bit of plain flour in there, just a little bit, not much. We're going to add some milk. We're 
maybe about a half a cup or a third of a cup. We're gonna blend that in there real good and that's gonna make a fine wet batter. We'll put a little salt and pepper in this, just a tiny bit of salt and pepper to this. I had to go over there and wash my hands, so let's put a little salt and pepper. Just maybe like that. Just a pinch of each, because we have seasoned the other. A little bit more pepper in there. Kind of mix that up. So, we're going to build an assembly line. So we're going to have our this, we're going to have that, we're going to put our chicken here, and then we're going to have the pan for it to go in the oven down there. Let me get that all set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, family, we're back, and we've got our assembly line. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to oil these pans, not spray, oil. You're going to need a little bit of oil on the bottom of these pans so that you get a crispy, crispy, crispy. And you're not going to flip these. You're going to let them cook on one side. You'll have one side that's something that I got in my eye. <laughs> You'll have some that the one side will be really crispy and the other to, and the top will be a little less crispy. Now, if you want to flip them, you can, but sometimes you'll lose your top coating. So I'm gonna oil two pans because it's gonna take them. So I've got two cookie sheets that I oiled. So you're just gonna take your hand and kind of work that oil around in there. And it's a good bit of oil. I mean, you, you, you have to have oil. So you're oven frying the chicken and not deep frying the chicken. But you can use spray, you can use olive oil, canola oil, whatever you prefer. We got both pans ready to go. I don't know if you guys can see Tilly, but she went and got her hair cut yesterday. Till Wilbers, Till Wilbers, can you tell them how pretty you are? And she had to get a sweater because she doesn't have any fur right now, and so does Lacey. Oh, and this is Wacey. I got her hair cut yesterday, and they have matching sweaters with hoodies. <laughs> Stop, Tilly. And so anyway, we noticed when Lacey got her hair cut that her head was awful small compared to her body. So she is going on a diet with Grandma Nene too. <laughs> she's been trying to eat her food and Tilly's food. So she's kind of put on a little bit of weight. Now what I like to do is I like to use these tongs and I like to use three, well, only two of them. I only have to use two because this uh, will stick to this tong when you put it over in here. So you'll have a big wadded mess. So let's get this done. I'm gonna let you listen to some music while we get it over there and it's gonna be delicious. Let's get it done. has cute stories well last week my little granddaughter Chachi Chacharu she is four 
going on 14 and she has a style already at four years old and she has certain clothes that she loves to wear and certain clothes that she does not like to wear and so a couple days a week Grammy gets to take them to school because mom and daddy has to go to work early so I'm dressing her and she looks across the room and she sees the clothes that mama has sent in the bag and they it's a little pink jogging outfit with leopard print circles on it and she said mama knows I hate that outfit and I, I don't want to wear it and anybody that's dealt with three, two, three, four year olds, five, six, 14 year olds, know that they can have a meltdown in a New York minute. I seen it coming. All of a sudden I took those clothes and I threw them in the floor and I said, what in the world was mama thinking? She knows you can't wear ugly clothes to school. I guess I'm gonna have to send you to school naked. My grandson had a piece of turkey bacon going to his lips and he, his eyes got like really big around and he said, what the heck? And I said, yeah, you're just going to have to go to school naked because we cannot go to school in this ugly outfit. I don't know what your mama was thinking. All of a sudden, she busted out laughing, and I said, I don't know what Miss Ashley's going to say, but you're going to school in your underwear and your socks and your boots. And so anyway, she said, well, I guess I'll wear it this one last time. But I'm telling Mama when she picks me up from school, I'm never wearing that outfit again. So the next day I had a conversation with my daughter and she said, she told me as soon as I picked her up, don't ever send that ugly outfit again. Grammy almost sent me to school naked. <laughs> I thought I'd share that with you. That's a wonderful story. I just love my little grandbabies. Alrighty. Be right okay, back. Family, as you can see, I have plenty left. But I'm just gonna tell you, there's just sometimes, depending on what you're doing, you'll run out. And so I just go ahead and make the whole box. Plus my family likes extra crumbles. So I always go back over the top of them and I just add a little bit more cornflakes over the top of them. And then they'll, the crumbles will cook on the pan. And my family likes that. So these are getting ready to go in the refrigerator. Now I tell you, they'll hold together better if you can Put them in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes before you cook them. But we're going right in the oven with them. We're going right in the oven with them. They're going to be delicious. They're going to be delicious. Alrighty. Uh, I'm going to put these in the oven at 350 minutes. Uh, 350 minutes. I'm going to put these in the oven at 350 degrees. And they're going to cook for probably close to 25 to 30 minutes because the chicken tender meat doesn't take a whole lot of time to cook. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, family, our chicken's done. It's all down here, and it is hotter than a firecracker. Let me get like a small one from right here. And let me show you what it's going to look like. It's going to look like that. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And you're gonna take that fork and you can have honey mustard with it or anything you want look at that steam coming off of it it is so good till you get that crispy bottom mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. that is good and it made one bag made one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen pieces the little kids, sorry, something was needing stirring on the stove, so I picked it off and got it. It's brown gravy for the mashed potatoes that I made. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I've enjoyed making it for you. I love you. I'll see you for Wednesday Encouragement, and until uh, next time, I'm Grammy Nene. God bless.